So we're done with uh, discussing ionic compounds in great detail. Um, as I mentioned earlier, ionic bonds are only one way of getting atoms to stick to each other. Uh, there's another major way that allows atoms to stick to each other. And that, that way of attaching atoms to each other is called covalent bonding. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, covalent compounds are compounds where two or more non-metallic atoms share electrons. And the emphasis here is on share. Don't get too hung up on the word non-metallic. As far as we're concerned, we can think of covalent compounds are compounds where two or more atoms are sharing electrons. And so when two or more atoms share electrons, they form what's called a covalent molecule. And so let's talk, let, let's talk about this in a little more detail and give you a few examples of covalent molecules. So what do I mean by sharing? Um, the, the best way to talk about sharing is to give you an example. Here, over on the left, is one hydrogen atom. And let's pretend that this is a neutral hydrogen atom. Even though hydrogen doesn't prefer to be this way, let's pretend that it's neutral. So the way that I've shown that here is I've shown uh, one, one of the two uh, slots in the first shell of hydrogen is being filled in. The other one is supposed to be empty. So this, this uh, slot here is supposed to be empty. And let's pretend that we have a second hydrogen atom that's essentially in the same state. It has one electron in its first shell and it has one empty slot. So you can think of uh, both of these hydrogen atoms. Neither one is in its preferred state. This hydrogen would prefer to have this slot either filled or have this electron gone. And the same thing with this hydrogen atom as well. So how can you get them uh, to be in their preferred state by sharing? Uh, oh, the other thing that I want to point out is that these, you can think of this as being two separate hydrogen atoms. There's one over here, and there's one over here. The way to get them to actually uh, be in their preferred state is to have each one share its electron with the other. So if the hydrogen atom on the left shares its electron with the hydrogen atom on the right, and the one on the right does the same thing, then if they're sharing, this atom over here has two valence electrons. It has uh, both slots filled in its first shell. And the same thing is true for this hydrogen atom on the right. This hydrogen atom also has both slots filled in its first shell. So you can think of both of these atoms now being in their preferred state because the hydrogen atom on the left has two uh, electrons in its first shell and the hydrogen atom on the right also has two valence electrons in its first shell. When they are sharing like that, they are essentially attached to each other. So that's an example of sharing right there. And um, the, a, a simpler way of writing this, uh, these two atoms attached to each other is to write the molecular formula. So there are two hydrogen atoms attached to each other, so we write the capital letter H, which is the symbol for hydrogen, and a subscript of two, which means there are two of them attached to each other. Another way of writing this um, which is sometimes written. Oh, the, the other thing that I should point out is that uh, above we had two hydrogen atoms that were separate from each other. Once they start sharing, then they make one single hydrogen molecule. So this thing over here is one hydrogen molecule. You could write it this way as well. Another way of writing the attachment is this way. You can write the letter H for one hydrogen atom, then you write a solid line between uh, this hydrogen atom on the left and the one on the right. And the solid line is sort of chemistry shorthand for one, uh, one set of, one pair of shared electrons. So one pair of shared electrons is equal to one solid line. And that solid line is chemistry shorthand for a covalent bond or a covalent attachment. This solid line just means that these two atoms here are sharing a pair of electrons. And that is our introduction to a covalent bond. So covalent bonds are different than ionic bonds. The covalent bonds basically mean that you have two atoms sharing pairs of electrons. And sometimes people will call H2 diatonic hydrogen. Uh, this is a little bit of a fancy term. What it basically means, di it means two, atomic means uh, atoms. So diatomic means two atoms of hydrogen stuck to each other. So H2 sometimes is called diatomic hydrogen. Here's a different example of covalent bonding. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, let's pretend that we have our 
neutral hydrogen atom again. This is not in its preferred state. Um, and we have a second neutral hydrogen atom, also not in its preferred state. Each one has uh, one electron and one empty slot, one electron and one empty slot. And let's add a third atom in. Here's oxygen. This is also neutral oxygen, and this oxygen is also not in its preferred state. It would prefer to have its outermost shell completely filled. And again, here we're basically showing the, the Lewis structure of our oxygen and our hydrogen atoms. So you can think of none of these atoms here is in its preferred state. Uh, this oxygen has two empty slots. Each of the hydrogens has one empty slot. How can we get them to share so that everybody is in their preferred state? And it, it's relatively straightforward to get them to share so that everyone is in a preferred state. The way to do it is to have this hydrogen on the left share one of its electrons with the empty slot over here on the left, and have this other hydrogen atom share its electron with the empty slot on the right side of the oxygen. And when you have that situation, then all of the atoms end up in their preferred state. This hydrogen atom has two electrons in its first shell now. So does this hydrogen atom over here. So both of them are now in their preferred state because they're sharing uh, electrons with the oxygen. And this oxygen also now has eight electrons in its outermost shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so if you have two hydrogen atoms, one, two, and an oxygen atom, the, the only way to get them into their preferred state, or, or the simplest way to get them into their preferred state, is to have them each share one pair of electrons with the other. And what you end up making in that case is you make uh, two hydrogens and an oxygen makes a, a water molecule. So that is why the formula for water is H2O, because you can get two hydrogen atoms to share electrons with one oxygen atom and have all three atoms end up in their preferred state of having their valence shell filled with electrons. So that's one water molecule. Another way of drawing a water molecule is shown here. Um, it's shown down here. And again, the solid lines, here's one solid line, that is representing one pair of shared electrons. The other solid line here is representing the other pair of shared electrons. So the attachment of the atoms in a water molecule is that you have an oxygen in the center, and then it is making one covalent bond to one hydrogen atom, and another covalent bond to another hydrogen atom. And it turns out that the water molecule is actually bent a little bit. We won't go into details about why it's bent, but that, that's why I'm drawing it uh, the way that I'm drawing it in this case. But uh, try not to get too worried about why it's bent. But basically, um, by following the same rules that we outlined in uh, Unit 3, we can figure out that we can get two hydrogen atoms to attach to one oxygen atom um, by following the rules of trying to fill up the outermost shell of electrons. So if you, fill, if you follow those rules, you can get hydrogen to be in its preferred state, you can get oxygen to be in its preferred state, and you can get this hydrogen in its preferred state as well. And that is why the formula for water is H2O. And that's also why uh, the formula for water is not H3O or HO. This is, this is basically the easiest way to get all three atoms in their preferred state and sharing the proper number of electrons. So uh, again, just to emphasize, two electrons, so let me backtrack, two electrons being shared is equal to one covalent bond. That becomes important in the next example, which is a little bit more complicated. Oh, one thing that I want to emphasize, why are, why are these bonds called covalent? Well, co basically means sharing, and valent means valence electrons. So they are sharing valence electrons. That's, that's why that name comes about. So here's a slightly fancier version of covalent bonding. In this case, we have two oxygen atoms, one on the left, one on the right, and one carbon atom. They're all electrically neutral. What that means is this oxygen atom has two empty slots. So does this one. And this carbon atom is neutral, and it has four empty slots. So one, two, three, four. And you can work that out why each one has, why the carbon has four empty slots and the oxygens have two on your own, but you can take my word for it now.
So you can think of this as none of the three atoms here are particularly happy. They're not in their preferred state. So how do we get them in their preferred state? Well, first thing that we could do is we could say, look, why don't we have the oxygen atom on the left share an electron with the carbon, and the carbon uh, shares back with the oxygen. And we do the same thing with the oxygen atom on the right. Everybody's sharing one pair. Are the atoms in their preferred state? Are they happy at this point? So let's count them up. How about this oxygen here? How many valence electrons does it have? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It still has one empty slot. What about this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It also still has one empty slot. So neither of the oxygen atoms is, is, is in its preferred state. Neither of the oxygen atoms is quote unquote happy. What about the carbon here? Let's count up how many valence electrons it has. One, two, three, four, five, six. The carbon atom, the way that we've drawn it, still has two empty slots because the outermost shell can hold eight and it only has six. So still, none of the atoms is happy. This oxygen atom only has seven valence, this carbon has six valence, and this oxygen has seven valence. So can we fix the situation again? Well, we actually can. And the answer to this problem is more sharing. In the above example, uh, what we had was each oxygen sharing one electron with the carbon. But what if we have the oxygens share two electrons with the carbon, and the carbon shares two electrons back? Then we can ask the questions again. How many valence electrons does this oxygen atom have now? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this oxygen is in its preferred state because its outermost shell is filled with electrons. What about this oxygen? It's also sharing two pairs, or it's sharing two electrons with the carbon, and the carbon is sharing two back. How many valence electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this oxygen also is in its preferred state. And finally, what about this carbon? Is the carbon in the preferred state? How many electrons does it have in its outer shell? If you take into account the atoms that are the electrons that are being shared with it, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So even the carbon here in the middle has its valence shell filled with electrons now. So all three atoms, the oxygens and the carbon, are in their preferred state. So it turns out that if you want to attach two oxygens to a carbon atom, you actually need to share two pairs of electrons, uh, over here on the left and over here on the right. And we said that one pair of shared electrons is one covalent bond. So two pairs of shared electrons is actually two covalent bonds. And this turns out to be the formula for carbon dioxide. Um, the reason why the formula for carbon dioxide is CO2 is because you can actually get two oxygen atoms to attach to one carbon atom so that each of the atoms in this collection is in its preferred state. And another way of writing that is that the carbon atom over here in the center is making two covalent bonds, and I'm showing that by two solid lines, to the oxygen atom on the left. And this central carbon atom is also making two covalent bonds, shown on the right here as two solid lines, to the oxygen atom on the right. So you can write the attachment of the carbon and oxygen atoms in carbon dioxide like this. It's a little bit complicated. Or you can write them uh, maybe in simpler terms like this on the right. And these uh, two covalent bonds are usually referred to as double bonds or double covalent bonds. So you can basically, by, by asking and answering the questions of is uh, is this atom here in its preferred state? Does it have a filled uh, set of valence electrons? And asking the same questions about each and every atom, you can figure out how atoms will attach to each other and what types of bonds they will make. If you have two oxygens and one carbon, it turns out that they're going to attach to each other with double covalent bonds because that's the only way that you can get each atom into its preferred state. On the previous slide, you can have two hydrogens and one oxygen atom, and you can get them into their preferred state with single covalent bonds. So you can actually play this game to figure out what types of bonds uh, different atoms will have in different molecules. Here's a, here's a final question uh, before we um, 
end our introduction to covalent bonds. These are two nitrogen atoms. First question is, uh, how many pairs of electrons are they sharing? You can pause uh, before I talk about the answer. They're actually sharing three pairs of, of electrons. So here's pair number one that they're sharing, here's pair number two, and here's pair number three. What that means is that these nitrogen atoms are actually making a triple covalent bond. So another way of writing it is just N with a subscript of two. That means two nitrogen atoms attached to each other. Or you can write it this way. This is the triple covalent bond shown by three solid lines. Um, as a rule, triple covalent bonds are stronger than double covalent bonds, and double covalent bonds are stronger than single covalent bonds. So you can think of this attachment, these two nitrogens attached to each other, as having a very strong attachment because it's a triple covalent bond. They're sharing three, three pairs of electrons. And most of the air in the room that you're breathing is actually made of nitrogen gas. So what I want you to know as far as this section is concerned, I don't want you to memorize the Lewis structures of the different atoms. Um, that, that, that's not really necessary. What I want you to do, however, is I want you to understand how to draw the Lewis structure of an atom if I give you the number of valence electrons. So in other words, if you can figure out how many valence electrons an atom has, then you should be able to draw the Lewis structure. And also, if I show you a picture of a Lewis structure and ask you how many bonds it can make, you should be able to tell me because you should be able to figure out how many empty slots that particular atom has for sharing.